the meeting. Please hit roll. Mr. Parrish? Here. Mrs. Staub? Here. Mr. Reynolds? Here. Mr. Henning? Mr. Haas? Mrs. Miller? Here. Mr. Gauck? Here. Ms. Dickey? Here. We have a quorum. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <laughs> okay, do we have any agenda changes this evening? We do not. Do we have any public comments this evening? Okay. All right, we've all had a chance to look at the consent agenda. Do we have any additions or corrections? If not, we need a motion to approve the consent agenda. So moved. Second. A motion. A second. Mike, we'll start with you. Aye. 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 Motion passes. Uh, we need to do our committee reports. And I don't think we have any. Do we have uh, student members report this evening? Um, the winter athletic schedules were released and the girls and boys basketball seasons have both been off to a great start. Haley Kimes has broken a 20 year record with steals in it, for steals in a game with 15 steals, uh, previously held by Allison Randall with 14, and Ellie Eichenlaub broke a 28-year record for blocks in a single game with eight blocks. Um, this record was previously tied, tied three times, and Maddie Schwimmer is second in STL Sport for three free throws and the top 20 for three-pointers. Um, for bowling, Lauren Hunter placed first at their triad tournament. Um, FCCLA has kicked off the holiday season by delivering Thanksgiving meal boxes to families in the district and had their annu annual Christmas party at the F Family Living Center um, Saturday and brought the Christmas cheer to many living in the shelter by providing breakfast, playing games, and handing out some gifts. Student Council also went shopping for and wrapped some gifts for local families. NABC held their annual Christmas sale, and band had stu 17 students attend the Prairie Honor Band Festival at West Glen High School, and the band concert and pancake dinner that were supposed to be this Sunday have been postponed until a later date. We don't know when they're going to have that. Miss um, Asher and Miss Westbecker took a group of students to see Ki to Kill a Mockingbird at SIUC, which included two FCHS graduates in, in the cast, Jake Summers and Allison Steele. Um, the New Horizons Club attended their fall field trip to the edge and had a great time playing laser tag. Um, the Illinois State Scholars List was released and 24 FCHS students received this title. Students in Programming 2 learned how to sync up Christmas lights with music in the fireplace light display that's right outside the library. It's really interesting if you see it lit up. Um, uh, we had uh, an extended weekend with the snow days leading up to finals, but finals exams are gonna remain the same. Um, it'll be tomorrow, um, Thursday and Friday. And I would like to thank the shop classes personally for um, making the suggestion box that I brought up at the last meeting. Okay, any questions or comments? All right, let's move on to the principal's report. Okay, so I have a couple of teacher introductions here for you tonight. So this is Miss Erica Bainbridge, and she teaches in our Spanish department, and this is her first year at Free York High School. And Miss Michelle Bartholomew, um, who teaches in our Family Consumer Science Department and sponsors FCCLA, and there's lots of news about FCCLA and all the volunteer hours. They've been very busy with Thanksgiving meals and Christmas at the Family Living Center, and they'll do just year-round. A lot of our kids are involved in those volunteer activities. So, welcome, ladies. Thanks. Um, also, uh, teacher news. Um, another newcomer to Freeburg High School, Kyle Hecker, in our math department, um, just defended his thesis and earned his master's degree in mathematics, so we're happy to have him on board uh, from SIUE. Uh, the students object suggestion box that she mentioned um, is now available. It's located in the office, so when the kids come in to turn in 
any lunch money, checks, it's right there by where they just do all that stuff and take care of it so they can add anything that they would like. Um, and yes, thank you to Doug Haas and the construction classes for designing and making the box. It's really nice. They did a great job. Um, PSAT and SAT data analysis. Um, Jeff Alton and myself will be meeting with members of both the math and the English departments in January um, to examine all the student test results we've had since we've been doing the PSAT 8-9, the PSA 10, and now the SAT. This is really kind of the first time we can go back and really look to see how our freshmen are progressing. How did they do on the 8-9? How did they do on 10? Helps us determine maybe where some gaps are what the strengths are, what the weaknesses are. We can see every single question from past tests and then give that information out to our teachers too to, to say this is a great area, this is an area we need to focus on. Um, looking forward to it, it's gonna you know, give us some answers and it's just really good data to have, so we're gonna start doing that in January. Final exams is um, tomorrow and Thursday and Friday. I've, um, you know, a couple, couple kids are a little panicky and I, I'm like, it's gonna be fine. The teachers are putting stuff out on Google Classroom and email and teacher ease and kids have been emailing back and forth with teachers <coughs> about staying in touch. Um, one of the kids is like, can we just take it after Christmas? I'm like, I don't think you really wanna sit for two weeks on your, you know, your, your chem final or your, you know, algebra, four, you know, algebra two final. Um, so we're gonna go as expected with exams tomorrow. Um, she mentioned also um, the student council received enough money um, from their FCHS student faculty Christmas fundraiser that they provide gifts for 32 families in our district. So that was congratulations to them. I think Mr. McEvely's room and Mrs. Sonnenberg, they have a co-taught class, raised 800 just in their class alone. So they have a competition, so that was great. Uh, the music department unfortunately did not get to have their concert on Sunday. They are going to reschedule um, the concert and they had a Chris Cakes um, pancake breakfast. They're going to reschedule all that in January. So hold on to your tickets if you bought them. Um, holiday tournament schedules for basketball. I had the boys on there already for you and your board reports. So the, the list of games, um, they'll start 12 26 um, at 1230 against Valmeyer. The girls are going to be at Mascuda and they actually start on 12 23. They're going to be uh, 10 o'clock a.m. versus Babel East. So good luck to all those teams, and good luck to everybody. Have a great, safe holiday. holiday. Okay, any questions or comments? I have a, a question about the Illinois State Scholars. We have 24. 24. How does that about average what we usually get? Or I would say we're usually about, I would say 21 to 22, sometimes 23. Okay. So I'd have to go back and compare, but it's, it's maybe one or two above where we okay. were in the last year. Okay. So. Sounds good. Okay, let's move on to the superintendent's report. All right, um, first, uh, Governor Pritzker uh, sent out a letter of his wishes uh, for the legislative uh, session that's coming up, and one of the focuses is gonna be pension reform. So that'll be interesting to find out what kind of impact that has on the school district financially. So I'll keep you up to date, updated on that. Um, as you may uh, have guessed, we did not pick up the activity bus yesterday. Um, I think we we're looking at uh, Thursday or Friday this week to get that brought in and, and put that in, um, put it to work. Uh, new driver's ed car. So we talked last month if we could find uh, uh, some cars, and actually they found a couple cars that I, I think the deal was a pretty darn good deal. Um, two 2016 Chevy Malibus. Uh, one with about 12,000, the other one with about 15,000 miles. Um, looks like we're going to be able to get those for just a little over 28.6. They do come with a five year, 60,000 mile warranty. Um, found them, I think it's up at the Schmidt place that I found. I think that's where they found them. And uh, so, um, and then as far as the number being over the 25 cents they're used, we don't have to bid that out since it's used property. So that was, that was really nice, getting two vehicles. Um, I thought we did a pretty good deal. Our, our Mr. Toma, and, uh, our Mr. Fritz, and, and, and Bob did a really nice job. Uh, I would like to say real quickly a big thank you to Mr. Toma and his crew. Um, I showed up here about 10 o'clock this morning, and it, it looked pretty bad. And uh, with all the snow that we got, they did a great job of getting everything cleared off, and they were able to get all the way around so kids can get in the building and clear the doorways. And so I'd like to thank them for all the work uh, they put in. Uh, and I'd also like to wish uh, all the board members, all the teachers, everybody, 
uh, the Freeburg High School family uh, a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Any questions or comments on the superintendent's report? Seeing none, we'll move on to old business. Uh, athletic storage building update. Uh, we were delayed quite a bit from with getting uh, the uh, building permit from the ROE, and we did get that finally. Uh, so we have ordered the culvert. Um, obviously the snow is going to slow us up, so uh, we're going to keep proceeding forward uh, with um, trying to get that put in whenever we can and, and, and uh, weather permitting, but um, um, obviously it's probably going to be pushed off a little bit farther into the new year. Okay. Any comments, questions? Next item. I uh, met with uh, FGM architect Mike Staub uh, earlier this month about the uh, the possibility of building, and I did uh, make a copy in your packet. I'm, again, I'm, I, I just assume everybody knows what I know, but I don't know. But it's all it all just shows you is the South Edition, and that's what we're looking at. Uh, uh, the question mark of whether we can or can't go up. So the 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 answer is yes, we can go up. Uh, there's going to be some modifications that will be needed on the first floor. Um, they have to uh, beef up the X bracing that's in the walls that are there now. And then there's a little bit of block work on the stairwells. Other than that, uh, there's not a whole lot of work. Um, if I go by what the industry average is, it's a 28,500 square feet addition, 14 classrooms. Um, it comes out to be somewhere between 4 and 5 million. But since there's no groundwork or, or all of that, um, Mike thinks we can probably get it in less than that. Um, he is going to, I've asked him to put together a plan for uh, kind of a design for, from them of the second floor and a hallway that extends the west hallway to the Ag Center um, and have numbers available for the January meeting. Um, I've got a meeting scheduled with Tom Crabtree from Stiefel to look at what we can do financially with our bonds, um, what we, you know, how can we manipulate what we are currently doing, um, and hopefully we'll be able to have a number by the January meeting as well. So um, what I'd like to do is to set a building grounds meeting for six o'clock of the, before the January meeting so that we can kind of, uh, I've talked to Mike. Mike has said he would come in, and we can kind of have a conversation. Um, and then if, if uh, Tom Crabtree is available, we could bring him in as well, um, just to try to kind of get that next step to see, you know, how we want to do this. Um, I did talk to Mike and ask him to uh, start working with the uh, engineers and and kind of design a phasing of of kind of a transformation. Um, and I listed the, the following items. Uh, the second floor um, of the uh, south addition with the new corridor, uh, looking to, to reconfigure the north end to use it to kind of isolate it as more of an industrial arts, um, to look to expand the cafeteria uh, so we can expand more seating, um, and then also to look at the possibility of a, a, a new gym and a performing arts. And so, Looking at those things and trying to figure out how do you phase those in? How do you, you know, what do you do first? And so he would, they're going to try to put that together. Uh, I don't, that won't be ready by January. That'll be something else we'll have to kind of talk about. But, um, and through all of this, the earliest we would be looking at would be probably the summer of 21. Um, they could get all the work done in the bottom floor in the summer's time, and they could actually start working on the second floor. And then the other thing they said is there, there would be no problems with doing the work on the second floor while we still have school. So it, it sounds fairly promising. So if we get more information, start talking about what our next step is. Okay. So I'm okay with the work, uh, building grounds. Would you send something to Gary and, and Dennis? Yeah. Yeah. We'll, we'll send it all out. Okay. Next item. Uh, we had talked last meeting about uh, uh, considering eliminating class rank. Uh, I don't have any new information for you. I do have a couple documents in your packet. Uh, one is the feedback that we got from uh, other universities, which is uh, 
for the most part, there isn't a uh, anything really negative to eliminate class rank, and there's actually some positives. Uh, and then um, an article that was in there from, I don't think I actually put what paper that was in, but there was an article in there. Um, so we're interested in, in, in having the board take action. Um, this would not take place um, uh, for the junior, current juniors and seniors. They would still do the class rank the way we do it. We would still um, have the top students speak at graduation, but this would start with the sophomore students. Okay, do we have any discussion on this? Or... Okay. I move to eliminate the practice of using class rank beginning with the class of 2022. Okay. Motion, do we have a second? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Seeing none, motion passes. Next item. Uh, we did, I did not get uh, a report from um, Dr. Woods with the um, uh, from <coughs> SLU on the curriculum audit. So as soon as we get that, um, I will bring that to the board. Typically, it's it's proper for the board to accept to, to take public action to accept the report. It doesn't mean that they agree with anything. Uh, but then once we get the report, then we'll you know we'll sit down, we'll start having conversations between the schools um, and within our own school about what we should or shouldn't do uh, with the information that we get from the report. Okay. Any questions or comments? Seeing none, we're going on to the next item. Um, we need to conduct a truth and taxation hearing. Um, our proposed uh, levy was over the 4.99% uh, threshold, so we're required to do the truth and taxation. So we'll need a motion to adjourn this regular meeting and enter into a truth and taxation hearing. Second. There's a motion and a second. Andy is driving. We don't. Okay, so <clears throat> we're now in our truth and taxation hearing. Um, the truth and taxation hearing is conducted to provide the public the opportunity to comment on the proposed 2019 tax levy. At this time, the public is welcome to comment on the proposed 2019 tax levy. <coughs> okay, seeing no public comments, that will conclude the public comments portion and we'll need a motion to reconvene the regular meeting. So we move. Motion by Mr. Reynolds. All those in favor say aye. 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 We're back in the regular meeting. All right, uh, the next is to approve the tax levy for um, tax year um, 2019. I don't know why I put 2016. Uh, but these numbers, we've checked them, they are all correct. Um, this is with the anticipation that the EAV will uh, increase to uh, $300 million. Uh, we don't think it's going to go to $300 million, but um, as close as we are, uh, did not want to lose out any money, so we kind of uh, went high on it. So um, if anybody has any questions about the numbers that are in there, uh, we're anticipating somewhere between uh, 4 and 5%, 4, 4 and 4.5%. 4 and um, if that does go to that, our um, tax rate will be essentially the same as it has been, it was last year. Okay, we talked about this at the last meeting a little bit. Did anybody have any questions or comments on this? Okay, we need a motion to approve the 2019 tax levy as presented. So moved. Sorry. Motion a second. Start with you. Aye. Nay. Aye. Aye. Motion passes. Next item. Uh, this is the culmination of the work that uh, Mrs. Miller, Mr. Haas, and I did, along with uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Boyd Ferguson from the IESB to revamp our entire board policy manual. Uh, that manual, 300 and some odd pages, was shared with you. So this is just the first reading. Uh, we do need two readings. Um, I don't know if Angie wanted to I should just say, I too. felt like we had a ton of questions when we were going over it, but we resolved most of them between the three of us. If you guys had any, if saw anything that concerned you, please let me know and I'll answer any questions you have. But we we literally went through this line by line, page by page. We took a lot of time and put a lot of thought and energy into it. So um, we did what we thought the board would agree with. So if you have questions, let me know. 
Most of it's written by law. A lot of it you, we can't even change. It's, it's law. Mm -hmm. I mean, I there a lot of changes? Just to look at it. No, there was a, a, like, there were some things where um, it wasn't clear. You could make you could make wording changes. It meant the same thing, but. For instance, we had business manager instead of treasurer in some places and, and things like that. So a lot of it was, was more semantics than actual meaning. So uh, I, I, don't, I don't feel like we, we didn't change how the school's operating or do what we're doing right now. We just made the wording fit a little better and match what, we, what our pa current practices are. The, the main changes basically aligned us to what the press policy was. Because we had, there had been so many changes in the press policy, we hadn't updated the policy. And so a lot of those changes were to alignment. Um, I will tell you, and, and that did come out, I can't remember how many changes there are, 100, 100 some odd pages. So once we get through this reading, the spring will have a whole other set of changes we'll have to go through, because the, the last press policy was the biggest in history. And so, um, yeah. Hmm? That was good timing. Well, it was because of, there's so many law changes, yeah. and so it, it'll be, for us, it actually worked out pretty well because we didn't have to go through all those changes because that would have been even that more difficult. So, again, this is just a first reading. We'll do the second reading um, at the January meeting. Okay, any questions or comments? If not, we need a motion to approve the first reading of the updated FCHS board policy manual as presented. So moved. We have a second. motion. We have a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Next item. Uh, it's just a uh, practice of the district to have board members that attend the I if they would like to um, kind of give a little feedback of their... I actually typed this up and left them home. Did you? Yeah, but I can, I can read it. Okay. Um, two of the sessions that stood out to me, that the one I've attended before, it was um, rural schools in the crosshairs. Um, and... It, it sometimes seems like the rural schools, us, just kind of get swept aside as all the money gets funneled north. And so there was quite a bit of animosity in the room. Um, at least this year they did get a little bit smarter. The presenter was not from Chicago. <laughs> that caused a problem the year before because he could not relate to us and we could not relate to him. You know, um, Every year they give us a bigger room and every year we need a bigger room, so that's good that they can see that we do represent a giant chunk of the educational needs. Um, so that one's always interesting. I think, I'm not sure I'd like to attend it too to see if they put us in the auditorium or something. Um, the other one that really stood out was the, um, I don't remember what the exact title was, but it was the vaping, marijuana, and opioids one. And that one was downright terrifying. Um, I, I didn't even think about this, but there are companies that are marketing to these students. They make hoodies now that the strings are vaping pens so that these kids can hide it in class. Um, the, the nasty stuff that's in these vaping pens is just terrifying because it's not the legal stuff. It's the stuff that the kids are adding to it and the chemicals and all that. I, I I'm seeing a prediction of that this stuff is going to be worse than cigarette smoking ever was. Um, so yeah, it was, I, mean, I, know, I, I, don't, I didn't go in there completely naive, but I left there thinking, well, you are naive, you know, but it, it was, it was kind of scary, that one stood out. Okay. So. Andy? Um, so I attended the delegate assembly, which lasted most of Saturday. There was a lot of debate. So on the agenda, they had they had anticipated debate on two topics of like 18 or 20, however many we talked about that night. They it ended up like two or three that we didn't debate. So it was ridiculously long. Um, the assembly went with all, all of the same ones we did except for the first one. It was the. Um, the assembly went against the school safety. The resolution one is school safety. It was the choice to allow uh, schools to make their own choice of, of guns in the school. So, and I kind of anticipated that it was pretty close vote again, just like it was last year. Um, but 
it tends to, tends to be similar to the rural schools versus the urban schools, and since there are way more urban schools there, then it, that vote loses out every time. Um, the, I attended one set called You Can't Make This Stuff Up, it was a law review. Some really interesting stuff on that in there. Um, one of the things that stuck with me was that supervisors have a higher standard of care for their uh, employees. So um, say an, an employee said it has a racial slur or sexual or, or a, any sort of harassment, um, if it's a, a person on an equal level, not that it's not uh, accept, not that it's acceptable, but it's more unacceptable if it's in a supervisor. So um, that was that was something that came out of that. Um, I attended one called cyberbullying, sexting, and vaping. Uh, it was similar to Victoria's uh, experience. It was terrifying. Um, Nine-year-old girls getting manipulated online. Um, again, companies marketing tools and, and products to children to allow them to to vape to be sexually exploited, it was terrifying. Um, so I would, would encourage every parent out there to get as educated as possible on all of it. it is, there are apps out there that allow kids to hide things from their parents. There's like calculator, it looks like a calculator, works like a calculator, but it's a vault for storing pictures and videos that they don't want their parents to see. Um, I am not, I'm not huge on social media, but um, even like Snapchat has its own place where kids can hide their stuff. So Snapchat, a big social media thing, has a place where kids can hide videos and pictures if you know where to look. And it can be locked separate from the actual app. It's amazing. I was like, holy cow. So again, terrifying. Um, make sure you're educating yourself. Um, I went to one called the Happiness Advantage which a lot of people would think was mumbo jumbo, but I loved. Um, it talked about productivity with, with not only staff and administration, but then that also increasing the test scores and stuff for kids. So the happier you are, the more productive you are, the, the more concentrated you are, all that stuff. So happiness translates into better test scores and more productivity and better grades and better attendance and all, all this other stuff. So um, there was quite a bit of, I have quite a bit of information on that. Went to the vendor hall, which is always interesting. There's tons and tons of people there. And uh, there's tons of vendors and you can learn all kinds of stuff. Uh, so websites and app information and all kinds of stuff. And then the keynote speakers were, were good as always. Not as, not as good as maybe was last year, but, but they're, they're always interesting. Okay. First off, I went to a one that's called It's All About the Money. And it's basically the state legislatures more or less let you know what they did in the past year. And it was mentioned that uh, that last year they uh, fully funded the education. And uh, let's see. And, and also they mentioned that they passed the minimum wage for, for the teachers. Uh, items they have next for the legislative session are they talked about uh, coming up with 500 million for school construction. Uh, they also mentioned that money from the cannabis sales are going to be going to the general fund so the schools can be funded with some of that money. And then if the fair tax constitutional amendment passes, a lot of those funds are going to be are going to be possible helping the pension situation coming up here. And then I also went to a couple of them for school safety. One was called the threat assessment to bridge the school safety gap. Uh, this session discussed the need for schools to have threat assessment teams and training these teams to assist the severity of the threat and to determine if it can be handled in-house or needs to be turned over to authorities. Um, here, if you want to know more about this, they got a website you can go to. It's called ilschoolsafety.org. And then the next one was school building 
threat and vulnerability, vulnerable, I can't say it, vulnerable, vulnerable thank you, <laughs> assessment and audit. The meeting of this session discuss the security of the building and grounds, the use of technology for securing and the needs for a threat and vulnerability assessment, assessment team. And here again, learn more about this one, you can go to a couple of uh, websites. One is called, it's I-Q-U-A-S-T-S at PeoriaCounty.org, which I should mention that a lot of this was done in Peoria County where this all took place. And then again, also the ILSchoolSafety.org. And then another one I went to was Going Green, Saving Green. Uh, this session discussed what uh, Huntley School District 158 did to make their buildings energy efficient. Uh, first they had, had an energy audit done to see what kinds of savings they could expect. Uh, they installed new HV systems that were you know, pretty well up to date and, and were very efficient. Uh, they retrofitted a lot of lighting and then when uh, roofs were replaced they added a lot more insulation, and they also went with a white fiber on the top to reflect the, 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 the heat off <coughs> so it wouldn't absorb as much. Uh, oh, and then they added uh, what they call occupancy sensors for lighting and also for HVAC units. And they were also, which the way they talk, they probably may have started by now already because they're they were putting in a, a big solar farm for their buildings, and boy, it, it sounded like I think each building was going to have seven acres of solar panels to uh, to op Yeah, that's, I thought that was a lot. Yeah, but I guess it's apparently what they they need to to, to run the buildings and stuff. Like that. And uh, that's pretty well what I had. Just I just wanted to add one quick thing, and also oh, on that one, if you want. They passed out a thumb drive if you want to see that uh, uh, session. Okay. okay. Um, actually, this is for Gary, since he was here. Uh, it's not, but he, well, he went to the session as well. We went to the IHSA right. session, and they talked about all the different um, items that were going to be on the ballot, and that voting has taken place, and it just came out today. So they, they rescinded the districting for football. So they, so they were supposed to be going to districts, which meant we would have played the same size schools. They, the IHSA would have set up our, our schedule, which basically would have eliminated our conference. So uh, that's been kicked out. So we're going to keep doing it like we're more like we have been. But, um, and this may come up in future meetings, I, I think our conference is getting to a point where the big versus the small, is, the gap is becoming so, so broad that all the small schools that play football are tired of playing the Freeburg Centrals and uh, Columbia and Salem's. So I, I think down the road in the, in the next year or so that we're going to see some changes. So that was something that came up. It, it does have a direct effect on us. And then there was a couple others. The only thing that didn't pass was reducing the number of contact days in the summer from 25 to 20. So the, the contact days are still 25. So other than that, it wasn't. Thanks for these reports. Uh, let's move on to new business. Uh, the state has a maintenance grant uh, available. Um, I am going to apply for those. It's a $50,000 matching grant. The last report I got, it was only going to be about 44, 45,000 matching grant. Uh, but what I'm looking at is to apply for the abatement uh, that we had planned to do on the Central Hall, on the east side of the Central Hall. Um, I think it's estimated from the abatement about 90,000 and then uh, figure the amount of square footage by the average tiles about 20 to 30,000 so we'll, we'll get you know hopefully we can get about 45,000 and that's that's pretty much guaranteed that we'll get money whether we get the whole 45 or not but that's completely different than the building grant which that information hasn't come out yet so once that does we'll talk about that more uh, so that will need uh, board approval in January, so I'll, I'll get that applied for, and then that will be on the agenda for January. Any questions or comments on that? 
Move on to the next item. Uh, we have, um, we are looking to put cameras in the senior parking lot. Uh, in order to do that, we have to access electricity from a pole that the village owns. And so to do that, we have to enter, enter into a intergovernmental agreement. Um, I actually just rewrote that agreement today because it had District 70 in it instead of District 77. I just saw that. So uh, we're gonna, if, if we approve it, then I'll take our students, our signed copy and give it to them and then they'll sign it. Uh, basically, it's a, they're gonna charge us $300 a year to have access to the power. Uh, the the um, funds for the cameras are being paid for out of the Hamilton Herman. So it'll be a $300 a year expense for us. No, it's, it's just the power from one pole. So right now, there's gonna be, I believe there's a single camera and then like a multi-head camera that's going in. So we'll be able to get um, the whole parking lot. On one pole? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. And that'll cover all the mm -hmm. On that. Okay, any other questions or comments? Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Uh, that's oh. Oh. Google. oh, that's true. That's true. Sorry. We'll start with you, Vicks. Aye. 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 All right. Aye. How was the pan of tension? That motion passes. Sorry. All right. Next item. Uh, this is for information only, um, but the state income, I'm sorry, the state minimum wage increase will have an impact on us. Uh, the only employees that, well, they're not actually our employees, but the only folks that are in the building that are below the minimum wage are, the, are some of the OPA. And so in order to meet the minimum wage requirements, they're gonna to have to up their some salaries. This year, it's, we're only looking at about $174 difference. Um, that's something that they're going to pass on to us. Um, there's, there is information in your packet going down the road. So as we approve these each year, that'll show up in their, their uh, new contracts to meet the minimum wage. Uh, the good thing was, it looks like we are expecting to um, have about a $15,000 surplus of things that keep going the way they're going, so that's very positive. Okay. And that was, you know, stickler, but we've already got the contract signed for this year, why are we paying more than the contract? It, it has to do with, this is beyond either one of our controls, it was something that's mandated, it's, it's one of these unmanded, or unfunded mandates. I don't know if there is or not, but I mean, I can I know it's pass it. Number, yeah, I can pass it past Mary. One of those. Yeah, I understand. Okay. Next item. Um, board policy says that if we get a four-year request, I'm to uh, inform the board. Uh, there was a gentleman out of Iroquois West School District that is not happy with that school district, so he is sent us two different FOIAs. Um, we have sent him the information. Um, apparently he FOIAed all the districts that were exemplary. And so we sent the information. We sent electronically, so we can't charge him for that. Um, and we're, we only send readily available, so, so we don't have to create all kinds of documentation that we don't have. So that's happened. Okay, any questions or comments on that? Okay, next item. Um, there's a, a quite a few uh, curriculum changes, proposed curriculum changes that we are uh, proposing. Um, what I'd like to do, since this is the first reading, is just kind of go through them. And if you have questions, we can talk about them. Uh, music department, uh, Mr. Goss is interested in changing some things around. I've got a little chart there for you. Uh, but the main, cha uh, the main changes are to um, make the second semester, well, first off is to pull percussion out of the band. We did that a couple of years ago with one of the directors. Um, the previous director put it back in. He is interested in pulling it out again. Um, feels like he can get a lot more attention with the percussion. Uh, they'll still practice in the before school practices and things like that to, for the marching part. Uh, and then the second semester, they're gonna move away from percussion and marching band and then have uh, two different levels of, of uh, music. One they're gonna call wind ensemble, the other one is symphonic band. So one's for more beginners, one's for more advanced. 
Um, he'll meet with the kids during the semester to determine which, which one they go into. Um, the, uh, he also wants to introduce a jazz uh, uh, class. Um, there's a lot of kids, well not a lot, we have several kids that aren't in band uh, because that type of marching isn't really their thing, but they love music. He feels like he can draw those kids into a music program, into a jazz band. Um, those two classes of percussion and jazz will take the place of guitar and music appreciation, which the enrollment in there has dropped to, I think we only had two in guitar this year, and then only four are gonna be in it for the second semester. He just feels like he can actually address more things. They'll still have course, his sectionals, and his prep. So those are the changes he's interested in making. He's been working pretty closely with Mrs. Ketchum, and he's anticipating that our numbers are gonna increase from around 60 to maybe close to 90 next year. So um, there's, a, there's a very strong group at the grade school, um, so that's that's a pretty positive. So I don't I have, have any question about that one. Did, was that been discussed with the boosters organization? I can ask him. I can ask feedback from them prior to making changes. I mean, they're supporting the organization for the game. I mean, input is always good. You don't want to push a rope up a hill. No, but we also want the right person driving it. So I, I'll ask him that. Again, this is just first reading. And well, I don't think it's a. somewhat with us, so I'm sure he's mentioned it to the parents. I'll ask him, and we can bring that back. All right, next uh, Industrial Arts, um, with the um, uh, changeover with Mr. Kanaki going to the uh, woodworking, there are a couple things they would like to do. Uh, the, 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 the gist of the Industrial Art changes is to kind of focus the areas of study uh, for instead of kids kind of getting intermixed a couple of years in both automotive and, and woodworking, they're going to have a path that's more of an automotive path and a, and a path that's more of a woodworking construction path. So um, currently we have a small engines home maintenance class. Uh, they want to separate the small engines and, and do that's a semester and then do a semester of what they call introduction to automotive. And again, that <coughs> the kids take intro to trades. They would give them kind of a taste of all the different fields and then hopefully get them in a path where they are interested. Um, and then the uh, home maintenance would be, is a, the second semester, that would be matched up with an introduction to construction. Um, and then same idea. And then they want to um, introduce an advanced construction class. Um, and that would be a two hour class. Um, there is a possibility, depending on what the curriculum is, and, and I have a meeting scheduled for next week, and I probably can't remember with SWIC, that could actually become a dual credit course in a construction management um, type of a dual credit. We haven't worked through that. Um, and the only other thing that we're looking at doing is um, the drafting class. Uh, classes is, depending on who we get for the, um, the metal working, um, they could teach a drafting class, uh, but Mr. Haas has actually said he would be interested in coming back and teaching the uh, drafting classes part time. He changed his mind. Changed his mind. Good. Yeah. So, I mean, I had to offer him the farm, right. but yeah, I mean, he's got my parking spot and stuff. <laughs> Uh, the business department, uh, we are looking to take the keyboarding computer concepts class from a single, I'm sorry, from a full year class and make it to a single semester class. Uh, the idea is that uh, it'll allow more flexibility with scheduling. I uh, feel like the con concepts can be taught in that semester. Um, and then hopefully numbers in Mrs. B's class are, are starting to go up that hopefully will allow her to have more of her um, family consumer science. I didn't call it the wrong thing. Okay. And then 
uh, oh, two more. Math department. Uh, the state has mandated that each, each high school introduce a transitional math class. The class is designed for students to take the class, and if they successfully pass the class, they would then be exempt from taking any non-credited uh, classes at the local junior college. So right now, kids have to take the Accuplacer test. If they don't do well enough, they have to take one or two um, math or, or, well, in this case, math classes. If they successfully pass this class, they would not. So we have um, uh, are going to introduce this class. We have a curriculum um, that we can put together. That will have to be approved by SWIC. Um, and assuming we have enough students that are interested, then we'll have the class. Um, if, if, and, and we are allowed that if we don't have enough students, um, that we can just say we're not going to offer because we don't have enough students. What that number is, I don't really have that off the top of my head, but we're looking probably low single digits. And last but not least is the agriculture. Um, she is interested in introducing a vet tech class. Um, the idea is that the um, students would take animal science first and then take vet tech. And again, this is, along with the industrial arts, these are more geared towards career trainings, that they could either go directly into you know, college or trade school or even into uh, the workforce. Uh, so that they would alternate between vet tech and animal science from year to year. And so that, was, that seems to be a pretty big uh, push from the kids is a vet tech class. So that's what they're interested in. Questions or comments? Okay, well, I'd like to make the motion to move to approve the first reading of the curriculum changes for the 2020 to 2021 school year as presented. Sure. We have a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Seeing none. Okay, do we have any board correspondence this evening? Uh, we do not. Do we have any agenda items? Uh, none. Is there a reason to go into closed session? We do uh, to discuss student discipline and personnel. Motion to go into closed session. Second. Motion in the 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 second. Thank you. <coughs> okay, we're back from closed sessions. There's no action from the closed sessions this evening. We need a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. A motion. Do we have a second? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? We are adjourned. Thank you.